we are looking at theoretical models, instruction, and interventions for reading. First of all, what is a theory? It is not an untested hypothesis, as is commonly thought. A theory is a way to explain a set of facts. It connects a set of facts. If reality were a dot-to-dot -dot picture, it would be connecting the dots. Now, different theories connect different data dots differently. Theoretical models are used to understand reality, but in research, they are used to, uh, it affects the questions that are asked, depending on what model you ascribe to. It affects the type of data collected, the types of data that you don't collect, and how data are interpreted. That's why it is important that we understand theoretical models, especially as related to reading instruction. Now we're going to look at two common theoretical models, the phonological and the neurocognitive model. First, the phonological model. It describes the reading process thusly. You see the words on the page. They go up into the uh, Fathomous in this phonological processing, and then it goes to the cortex. That's what reading is. According to this model, reading is sounding out words, and the process involves four sub-processes. You perceive the words and letters, you put sounds to the uh, letters, you put the individual sounds together to identify or create words, and you put the words together to create ideas. This happens instantaneously, and it creates a form of speech in the head that the teacher or that the reader listens to while reading. According to this model, a proficient reader is a good sounder-outer. That reader can sound out words automatically so that the speech in the head is not interrupted. If you are a struggling reader, you have a sounding-out word deficit. Thus, struggling readers just need a little more sounding-out word instruction and sounding-out word practice. So the goal of this type of instruction, according to this model, is to create good sounder outers. Sound out this word, s, s, t, st, a, st, am, stamp, oh, stampe, stamped, stampede, hmm, sounding out this word wasn't very effective, was it? This is what usually happens when we focus only on sounding out word instruction in practice. The students get marginally better at sounding out words in isolation. Of course, if you give instruction and you measure sounding out word, sounding out words, of course they're going to get better. But there's little transfer of these sounding out word skills to the reading of authentic texts. And in the long term, students' ability to create meaning with authentic text does not improve significantly. Some facts. Now remember, a theory is used to explain a set of facts, but some facts that the phonological processing model does not account for. Proficient readers do not see, stop at every word. Only 60% of the words their eyeballs stop on. Proficient readers often insert words that are on the page, but are semantically or syntactically correct. What's going on here? Now, two big words, the ratio of corticothalaminic nerve fibers to thalamocortical fibers is 10 to 1. And I'll explain that in just a minute. And it does not account for the idea that information from the cortex is used to direct the eyes during reading. The neurocognitive or psycholinguistic model. This model says that the information in the head flows down. Here's those cortical thalamitic uh, nerve fibers, almost 10 times more information is flowing down than is flowing up. We we'll use what's in the head to direct the thalamus and interpret what is on the page. According to this model, reading's not sounding out words, it's creating meaning with print. And our brain uses three cueing systems to recognize words. To recognize words, you see a word and go, oh, I know what you are, I recognize it is the phonological system, the semantic, and the syntactic. According to the phonological model, you only use that. So the reader uses what's in 
the head to understand and make sense of what is on the page. We read with our brains. According to this model, a proficient reader can orchestrate a variety of strategies to construct meaning, not to sound out word. Here are just some of them. Using knowledge and contextual clues to predict and infer as we read, monitoring comprehension, metacognition, and employing fix-up strategies or fix-it strategies when comprehension breaks down. So a struggling reader is not very effective in the use of these strategies used to create meaning with print. So according to this model, instruction and interventions should include activities to develop not just the phonologic system, but all three cueing systems. If you're doing just phonics, you're giving one third of a reading education. Teach and develop meaning making strategies, instruction and intervention according to the neurocognitive model, and explicit and direct instruction related not to one but all four word identification strategies, analogy, morphemic analysis, context clues, and phonics. And to identify word, slightly different than to recognize. To identify word is you see a word, you do not recognize it, so you need some strategy to identify what that word is. Difference between identification and recognition. According to this model, reading instruction for all students, and I highlighted that, should have these things, daily reading practice, conversation and interaction around good books, authentic writing experiences where students write, record, and share their ideas. Activities, instruction to develop all three cueing systems and all four word identification systems, comprehension instruction, and activities to develop word knowledge or vocabulary. Now, there are no super secret specialized teaching strategies that only specially trained teachers can use for struggling readers for interventions or instruction. And I'm talking about mild, moderate, and severe. Readers, struggling readers, do not need a different type of instruction. There's no super secret strategies. As well, you want to avoid a splintered curriculum. When they get one type of instruction here in their gen ed reading class and another type here as part of remediation and intervention, that makes learning to read or developing their skills harder because they're getting different types of instruction. No, they need more intense versions of the same type of research based instruction that is occurring in a gen ed setting. Intensity means more time, more time on task or engaged, more time engaged in authentic reading and writing activities, and oftentimes with interventions that gets diminished, drill and scale instead of actually reading and writing, and smaller instructional groups. That's what we mean by intensity. There are differences in instruction between students with and without reading difficulties, but the, the difference is in emphasis and intensity, not in kind. Some readers need a little more of this and a little less of that. Other readers need a little more of that and a little less of this. Intensity, emphasis, not in kind. So what should be included in a reading intervention? Let me give you a clue. Students are not standardized products. Struggling readers are not all the same. There is no magic program, no one size fits all program method or approach. Stop it if you think you're going to get the program, the method, the approach that answers all reading problems. There are, however, knowledgeable teachers with toolboxes full of research based strategies that they can adopt and adapt and use apply according to the needs of his or her students. That's what we need in a reading intervention. So intervention should include some or all of the following. Yes, direct and systematic instruction, very direct in both word identification and comprehension skills, activities to develop students to uh, uh, enable students to develop their ability to recognize words, reading practice where they can read and respond to real texts, not artificial texts used to reinforce a letter, sound, or pattern, repeated reading, and other activities to develop fluency, 
and instruction and activity to develop comprehension and of course writing in some form and there are a variety of simple easy effective short writing activities that you can use remember learning to read is a social justice issue